This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 for the PlayStation Vita. Coming up on Destructoid, Assassin's Creed 3 is coming to America! Doom 4 might have gotten leaked, some screenshots anyway. And Tara's got a full preview of Max Payne 3 today on Destructoid Live! Hey there, welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Friday live show, Max. Happy Friday live Have show. Have you worn that jacket every single day for the past year? Yes. It just Thank occurred to noticing. me that that's a possibility. I got a, a new shirt, though. It's, it's like the Oakland Raiders, but it's Raiden from Mortal Kombat. How oh. sick is that, right? I thought it actually I'm said very, Raiders. Yeah, sports. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, let's do we, we have We've a, got a really exciting show today, actually. Like, yeah. like big news. Big news. Like big, big Lots news. of big news. Big news. Get into it. And this it. is just the tip of the iceberg, because next week is, is GDC, the big game developers conference, mm. which is going to be important. tiring. Uh, anyway, the big piece of news uh, today, th this week in general, uh, just to drop, is, is the reveal of Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. How crazy is that? That is crazy. Look at that. I it's know. like a history book cover. It's You'd nuts. think they make them every year or something. Yeah. Well, uh, we reported a few weeks ago that Ubisoft had announced that there would be a new setting and a new main character and that they weren't going to announce anything else about the game. This was a little while ago. That seemed anticlimactic, but now we know what the big fuss is. Assassin's Creed 3 is going to be set during the American Revolution, which is exciting. These tricorner cool. hats. Now, we were first treated to this lovely box art via the official Assassin's Creed Facebook page, which shows our new hero totally effing up a red coat and uh, in various formats, obviously. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, a bunch of screenshots were leaked, though it seemed more like a viral PR stunt than an actual leak. But regardless, the game is looking extremely rad. Now, along with the screens, we have a handful of details. The game is set in New England between 1753 and 1783 and stars a half-English, half-Mohawk assassin named Connor who has taken the side of the colonists. Now, the Assassin's Creed series, of course, is known for being historically faithful you know, for the most part, and having beautiful recreations of famous cities. And number three is supposed to be no exception, with uh, with players in uh, colonial Boston and New York, as well as a large stretch of unsettled woodland, known as Connecticut, uh, that's going to be called the Frontier. And that's going to be apparently 1.5 times uh, larger than the entirety of Rome was in Assassin's mm. Creed Brotherhood. So that's a lot of that's, that's a lot of bushes. Quite a yeah. lot of bushes. I grew up in that frontier, my friends. That's that's some that's some Bush fine bushes. Town. I did lots of stealthy bush parkour. And, and anyway, uh, the game promises weird. to have uh, a whole pile of history just just jammed into it, including appearances by George Washington and Ben Franklin. Yeah, my favorite non-president that everybody it, thinks is a president. It is all about the Benjamin. Everyone loves Ben Franklin. Yeah, he true. invented bifocals and the pot-bellied stove, and he once mm -hmm. tied a mouse to a kite so that he could electrocute it and learn about electricity. Yeah. I saw that in a cartoon. I anyway, that. Uh, in addition to Ben Franklin and George Washington, we'll also have playable events like the Great Fire of New York or the Battle of Valley Forge, and apparently there are going to be uh, over two and a half hours of, of, of beautiful mocap cutscenes, some of which include authentic Mohawk dialogue, as in, as in the, the Native American language. Hmm. They got actual Native Americans to come in and awesome. record that, so that's cool. Uh, and the game, gameplay-wise, you know, aside from the history lesson, uh, it promises to keep a lot of uh, familiar Assassin's Creed elements as well as adding some new ones. Uh, thankfully, they said they've gotten rid of the tower defense stuff from Revelation, mm. so that should be good for people. Um, what's interesting to think about is how how being stealthy in the wilderness will change the experience. I mean, so far it's it's mostly been uh, in in big big cities with pillars and fancy stuff to climb, uh, but this is going to be in trees and bushes. And everybody everybody loved Metal Gear Solid 3, which replaced the rigid industrial design of uh, the earlier Metal Gear games with trees and grass. So I'm very curious to see how Ubisoft handles it, uh, especially with all the the parkour and the free running and stuff. Uh, now, what I'm really curious about, and you guys can help me out with this one, is uh, how is this game going to be received in the UK? Now, I know we've got a lot of the English fans. I'm sure some of you guys are watching. I really hope so, anyway. Uh, and it's not exactly a secret that the French and the Brits have never really gotten along so well. So how do you guys feel about a French game where you play as an American guy killing British people? You going to boycott it? You gonna, I, think, I think they should boycott it. It's not really French I game. Just because Ubisoft is pretty, a French company. pretty sure it's a French game. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there's... French people it's in It's definitely it. an anti-British game. I'm pretty British sure game. French people did not this exist. This is a game about how like the that. British are bad. Those lobster backs. I'm bringing mm. that button back. They're, they're lobster backs. Uh, anyway. This is getting horribly racist It's not somehow. racist. They wear red coats like lobsters. Anyway, uh, I've never really been into the, the Assassin's Creed series personally. I, I dig the stealthy parkour open world stuff, but uh, I could never get past the whole Renaissance Fair Olive Garden feel of the yeah. previous four games. I'm, I'm not like super into Assassin's Creed either, and I'm not really into like 
games but about you're, you're wars Italian. or like revolutionary wars, you're but Italian. them together sounds really intriguing for some reason. Because I, yeah. I know Assassin's Creed like will do it right. I, it, it's kind of neat because we've never seen like uh, like a colonial revolutionary era game before. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I'm sure they exist. I mean, I'm sure they exist, but you never hear about them because it's usually like foofy old history games yeah. or RTS stuff, and it's like. Uh, I'm kind of stoked, and I didn't yeah. think I would be, but this this could be like you know, it, like it appeals more to me than the Italian. Yeah, story because like tricorner sure. hats, am I right? Yeah, also that, and also Ben Franklin. No, that man is a sex pot. Okay, moving on. So if you've ever wanted to rob banks while wearing a clown mask, or if you just like the movie Heat, then I implore you to check out Payday the Heist because it is a game about robbing banks and wearing clown masks, and it is awesome. And I think it was actually originally supposed to be PS3 only, but then it came out for PS3 and Steam. And now Steam has announced that they are making it free to play for this weekend only until Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Not only that, but they are discounting it 50% off until Monday. So you can buy the full game for 10 bucks, which is a steal. Max and I played this back at E3 in 2011. We loved it. Jim reviewed it for Destructoid when it came out, gave it a 7.5, which is really high for him. Um, he actually reviewed both the PS3 and the PC versions of the game hmm. and said the PC one was far superior. So seriously, you guys, go check this out. I promise you, you will have fun with it. It's like four-player co-op, super fun. Yeah, that looks looks good. Um, I'd, I'd love to check that out this weekend, but I mean... Yeah, I guess we gotta play that or something. Uh, <laughs> Give it to me. Fine, you can play that. I only play I wish it for the sex. I was wearing a low-cut shirt so I could put it down I only down play here. it for the, for the sex dialogue. Uh, we had a couple comments from people. Uh, the Pleasantator said, fast fact, it should be fun fact. We don't, we don't do fast facts. Mm. Uh, George Washington was a surveyor before he was a general. Actually, that's not really a fun fact. That's... It's neither fun nor fast. <laughs> that is neither informational nor entertainment. But uh, thank you wow. for your input. Uh, the Great Zarquan42 says, As a Brit, I shan't boycott it. I'll just play it as a spy for our good old king. <laughs> yes, God save the queen. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm going to man the chat. Man the chat, Tara. Yes. Okay. So Wednesday's episode was on Leap Day, which apparently caused the majority of our news stories to get sucked through a time vortex from the mid to late mm -hmm. 1990s. Uh, immediately after we shot the show, there was still more news that sounded like it was from GamePro in 97, uh, leaked screens of a new Doom game, allegedly. These briefly appeared online in the portfolio of id Games senior environmental artist Tao Lei, and he quick them, quickly took them down, but not before some internet bandits could save all 176 high-res images, compress them into a zip file, and then host it externally for everyone to download. The images are honestly really, really cool, though if you never told me they were from Doom 4, I'd have no reason to suspect that they are. Uh, we get a handful of uh, character models. We get this lovely lady. Uh, we get some dudes who look like hard-boiled marines or resistance fighters, uh, like this gentleman. Um, and then, uh, yeah, some some sort of space marine guys. But like like I said, it's, you're not seeing any you know cyber demons or uh, those those eyeball guys, whatever. Uh, the rest of the images are environmental mock-ups, which look really, really, really incredible. Uh, though, like I said, I, they don't really seem like Doom. They are just kind of you know, buildings. And then there's some scary looking tentacle root things that have grown into buildings, but uh, you know, like that there. But otherwise, it, it really just kind of looks like generic post-apocalyptic and or crappy, uh, you know, city landscapes or modern day Detroit, whichever. Uh, now at about this exact same time, there was some internet buzz about whether or not Doom 4 was being canceled. Uh, Bethesda's VP of PR, Pete Hines, told Joystick that no, the game was not canceled and that when they're ready, they're gonna show it off. Though they've pretty much been saying that for a few years now, so whatever. Uh, as for the leaked images, id's Matt Hooper, who is the design director for Rage, he tweeted, Those images have nothing to do with what you're going to see in Doom 4. When we officially show things, you will see awesome. Uh, personally, I have faith in whatever id's going to do with Doom. Uh, with Rage, id was sort of ambitiously trying to prove that they could make something uh, besides a gory, terrifying corridor shooter with incredible graphics, but I don't think anybody really wanted them to ever. So Doom was sort of a weird, you know, drive go-karts and go through different doors and talk to John Goodman for some reason. Uh, id, if you're listening, as long as you promise to make Doom 4 as disgusting and violent and terrifying and visually stunning as the Doom games have always been, please take all the time you want to get it made and 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 then make it and let us let us play it because I want to shoot the guys in the face. Hmm. Tara, what are they saying? Uh, zero skill seven eight nine said, God just let Doom die and rest in history. It was great back then, but all the old games that get picked up years later tend to suck. Nope. Some of them, a lot of them do. Nope. I'm not gonna lie. Nope. So you liked Duke Nukem mm -hmm. Forever then? Oh, I guess we better give up on Half Life episode three. Hmm. <sighs> you take this. No. 
All right, so before we head into the second half of our show, I would just like to quickly remind everyone that Journey comes out on PS3 on March 13th. This is the game from that game company. That's actually the name of the company, where you are in a desert and your goal is to basically cross the sands and make it to the mountain in the distance while essentially exploring everything around you. Very interesting concept for a game that I've personally been looking forward to for a long time. Oddly enough, it does not come out for another 11 days, but reviews are already hitting the internet, and Jim Sterling put his up on Destructoid.com yesterday. He gave the game a 9 out of 10, Bam. and praised it for its gorgeous visuals and its ability to establish a deep connection between two players with no language or means of communication other than simply exploring together. It seems like, and I actually gleaned this from Jim's review also, that it's the kind of game that's really hard to describe. You just have to play it to really get a true idea of the experience. The experience. Yeah. And it's only two to three hours long, so you can play it in one sitting, and you're actually encouraged to do so in order to get the full breadth of the experience. And yeah, this looks freaking amazing. I have been reading reviews all over the internet about this because I'm so excited, and I have not read a single bad thing. Uh, so Journey comes out on PSN on March 13th. That is going to be priced at $15. And it seems like it's well worth I your really time. want that game. I super duper ultra mega yeah. definitely I'm gonna, want that game. I'm going to really try to like fit a, maybe a review of that in after GDC or something if we have time. I don't know. I want to yeah. play it either way though. No, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are like, two to three hours for 15 bucks. Oh, yeah. Fuck you. Shut but up. Look at this game. It's five bucks an hour. It's I pay really... more than that to go to the movies. Yeah, exactly. Just kidding. No, I don't. I don't go to the movies because yeah, it's ridiculously movies? expensive. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I mean, the game looks great. I was trying to explain it uh, to my girlfriend. I was like, yeah, this game, Journey, is going to be awesome. You're like a little guy with a scarf in the desert. <laughs> yeah. And you just are going around. And then there's like multiplayer, but no, there's not. Yeah. Because you can't see who you're with. And she's like, what are you talking about? And then I was like, you get a scarf, OK? A, like, you get a scarf. A scarf there's a scarf. It's, it's a game about scarves. Hieroglyphics on it. Yeah. Yeah, right? Um, yeah, so there's weird. that. We got we got a couple comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Morgan712M said, uh, after the show, my goal is to find out where he got that shirt. It is, Mortal Kombat is one of my favorite games ever. If you guys want a shirt like this, it's on Redbubble. Uh, that's a site that's sort of like Cafe Press, except not shitty. Uh, it's just a bunch of stuff. I just found it on there. There's some really cool gaming stuff on there. It's made by artists and art school dropouts and people like me, so. You know, I got another cool one that I'll probably wear soon. It's, it's Skyrim. It's neat. Sweet. The jacket's from Jack Threads, if anyone's wondering. That's why I wear it every day. Mm. Anyway, let's. Uh, speaking of, uh, of sponsors and, and yep. such, let's take a word from our sponsor. Let's do that. Guys, guys, hello. Do you have a PlayStation Vita yet? Well, okay, get one, first of all, and then get Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom for it because it kicks ass, and, and it's also an excellent conflict resolution tool, you know, for friends or coworkers. Uh, you see, Tara and I are always bickering because we're stupid children, and that's a thing that happens, and sometimes I just want to karate kick her in the face a hundred times, but I can't do that. You smashed because a beer bottle over my head the other day. You were being a kind of a baby, I'm so sorry. I had to. But apparently doing stuff like that is bad and illegal. But now we have Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and we can settle our differences the old-fashioned way with superheroes and video game characters doing ridiculous 50-hit combo moves at each other. So, there's that. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on the Vita is, is not some silly, dumb, stupid mobile baby version of the hit fighting game. It is just plain and simple the hit fighting game. It's got all 48 different Capcom and Marvel characters, 50 if you count DLC, a ton of stages, ad hoc and online multiplayer modes, as well as single player arcade mode. If you're a hardcore fan, you should feel right at home with the Vita's buttons, triggers, D-pad, and analog sticks. And if you're a total noob or just incredibly lazy like Terra, there's even a touch mode where you can just tap people to death. It's actually really fun. Guys, honestly, just look at this game. We have not actually seen a portable fighting game that looks or this pretty or packs as much of a content. It's, it's nuts. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on the Vita is $39.99, and it's available now in cartridge form wherever games are sold or for download from the PlayStation Store right from your Vita. So just go check it out and karate kick some people in the face. Just do it. Don't smash a beer bottle over anyone's head. Don't ever do that. Scar. Anyway, back to the news. Back to the news. So, one of the games I've been dying to talk about for weeks now is Max Payne 3, and now that the embargo has lifted, I can finally do that without the constant looming threat of accidentally saying something I'm not supposed to and then being fired, which is a very real fear of mine. <laughs> So if you saw the trailer that Rockstar put out a couple weeks ago, then you already know the basic story. Max goes to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and starts working for Rodrigo Branco, a wealthy real estate tycoon whose trophy wife, Fabiana, has been kidnapped. Most of the game takes place in Brazil, but the story actually unfolds through flashbacks that Max has of his time back in New York City, 
which I am told there are some playable levels in New York City, though we actually didn't get to see them in our preview. Womp womp. We started off in a football stadium, or soccer, as it's called here in the football. Americas, uh, where Max and his partner were supposed to drop off a ransom in exchange for Fabiana. Of course, something goes wrong, as it always does, and it leads to a big shootout sequence in the stadium. So, I know there are going to be people out there already complaining that Rockstar is going to dumb this down and turn it into some Red Dead Redemption style shooter. Not the case, you guys. I actually think Rockstar did a really good job of capturing the weighty feel of combat from the first two games. Though I will say I found it harder to get used to. I don't know if it's because the aim is so precise or maybe you're moving faster during bullet time. I don't know what it is. But I am told there is an aim assist option in the menu which really would have helped me out during my demo because it was kind of embarrassing how many times I died. Uh, but you can go into bullet time just by pressing down on the right analog stick, which is great because it frees your left trigger up to aim. And if you hold the right trigger down while you're shooting, it'll trigger a short quick time event. You can also shoot dodge by running and then pressing the right bumper. Or if you're close to an enemy, you can press the right trigger for a contextual melee attack. Uh, they've also added a cover mechanic, which is totally new to the series, and of course the 360 degree prone shooting. I actually didn't really use m much of either of those during my demo. I, I guess I'm kind of a run and gun sort of gal, but the game is set up for that kind of play if that's what you're into, which is great. I will say I was really taken aback by the amount of depth and detail in the game. Like there's areas where you have to use a sniper rifle to shoot guys. There's objects everywhere in the environment that you can interact with, you know, kill people by shooting up a car that's filled with gasoline or something. Um, there's like even, even like small cosmetic details. Like for instance, if you shoot dodge and then land on grass, when you get up, there'll be grass stains on your oh. shirt. Like really cool that stuff. That sounds like a great thing, you know, for uh you know, for, for moms who want to play a game about stains. Okay, like so a, anyway. Like a Tide commercial um, or whatever. It's called Max Stains. Max Stains 3. Okay, that's Grass a pretty stains. good one, but Grass shut up. Grass Stains 3. Okay, what I was actually impressed most with, uh, of, out of everything that I saw, which is coincidentally what I hate most in most games, is uh, the conversations with other people. But they, they managed to make it interesting by kind of stylizing it in this way that as you're talking to other people, Words from your dialogue will occasionally like flash on the screen, then this kind of like color burn, psychedelic flash. It's got this whole very motion comic feel to it that I can't really describe, and they haven't shown it off in any of the trailers yet. But it really enhances just, you know, otherwise boring, not boring, but it enhances non-shooting sequences. And That's it helps transition from cutscene to gameplay in a really fluid way. That's good. One thing I couldn't stand, you, were, you really liked the story in, in uh, The Darkness too. Mm -hmm. One thing I hated about that was like, that they would just give you all this information by like, talking to people in first person. And it's, it's cool and it's immersive when yeah. you're like in a game that you're like, you stay in the perspective you're in. Yeah. Except when the person's just standing there talking to you, like that's. You see, at least in the darkness though, you can move while you're talking. It's not like an actual cutscene. It's just a person talking to you. But I'd still. much rather have that than uh. being forced to go into like a cutscene that I can't get out of. But fortunately, that's not a problem in this. It's totally seamless transition between cutscenes and uh, gameplay, and it's just fantastic. Uh, there actually is a multiplayer portion also. We didn't get to see it, but they say that it is just as important to them as the single player campaign. Oh. And believe it or not, it actually does include bullet time, which you would think wouldn't work in multiple, you know, players. Uh, but it actually does work just for people who happen to be in your line of sight. So very interesting. Um, I was told that kind of the shining star of the whole multiplayer section is this gang wars mode, which is kind of a series of matches with a with an actual storyline that's narrated by Max, and uh, the story evolves based on your team's performance. The way the guy described it to me kind of made it sound cool, and I'm guessing that's probably the next thing that they're gonna be showing off before the game actually comes out. But yeah, overall I was really impressed with everything that I saw. I think Rockstar has done a great job of maintaining that classic noir feel, but also updating it for modern times. And uh, it really seems like they've done the series mm. justice. I'm yeah, proud of you, Rockstar. It looks, uh, looks kind of like proud a... Of you. Max Payne 3 hits 360 and PS3 on May 15th, and then PC on May 29th. And if you guys are still not satisfied and you want more info, then be sure to check out Casey Baker's written preview. It's up on Destructoid.com. He wrote words, which if I read them aloud, would take me a long time to There recite. are a lot of words so to read. I cannot include all of the details. Yes. But those are my uh, impressions. You said it was a classic noir feel. I think it's very much, uh, a lot of people are comparing it to like Tony Scott movies. Like, um, 
uh, Man on Fire has very much that kind of look, and the, the sound of the color burn, the mm -hmm. sort of the words on screen, it sounds like something he would do. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Tony but, Scott uh, it's is not something my I've really director. ever seen before, but no. I don't know. I'm maybe curious. it's influenced from other things. It looks nice. I wish they had shown it off in the trailers. I don't know why they haven't. Maybe they're just saving it because it's really cool. But I, I read other previews too, and I didn't notice a whole lot of people addressing it either. So maybe I was just. So we got a couple personally. questions. Um, Jagged Joshua says, Max, what class do you play on Mass Effect? Oh, jeepers. I don't know. I think I played Soldier my first playthrough. Play Soldier and, too, I yeah, think. it's pretty lame, but it's like, you know. Straightforward, you adapt to it, you know. Uh, let's see. Question for Tara. This is from Omega Platinum. Who's a better Max? Max Payne or your co-host? Uh, Who has a better head of I'm hair? I'm gonna go with uh, Veronica Bell. Oh, sorry. My producer keeps talking to my yeah, ear and up, confusing Zach. me. Also, oh, somebody, somebody asked okay, how many. Uh, definitely Max Payne for sure. Somebody asked how many He's... discs are in the uh, Mass Effect Two. They said three discs. Not true. Two discs. Right there. See it. See it too. Did you just get us fired, Max? It's not embargoed. Oh fuck! Did I? Let's see here. Uh, any <sighs> other questions here? When is Fantasy Sex Island going to come out? Ask Kitty Lord. Um, I'm gonna be pitching that to some people at GDC. Gonna be talking to some people about that. Just trying to get that made, you know? Yeah. I got some great ideas for it. Oh, some, uh, is that some... the thing you're doing with uh, Fork Parker? Um, yeah, I mean, there's some, I got some, some meetings lined up for, for Max Google's Fantasy Beach Sex Island. I'm gonna be shopping that. Um, wow. You know, there's some, uh, some great new ideas for it, like you get a skateboard on it, in it. Okay, next question. And you can have sex with people. One LA Smith, La Smith said, hey guys, who's your favorite game developer slash publisher in terms of games, reliability, humor, etc." That's a good question. Um, uh, as far as big, publisher big developers or, or go. developers, um, studios. I, I love Bethesda. I think everything they touch is gold. Yeah, they, they pretty much just make gold things. Um, I also, we, Companies I love, Double Stop Fine. Stop talking in our ears, Double Zach. Fine you just said rage. Of, um, <laughs> Double Fine is a bunch of great titles. It's, it's always hard for me to think of uh, stuff off the top of my head. Um, what, are your, what are some of your favorites? Uh, I'm a big fan of Kojima. I love his stuff. Um, I, I think with, uh, with, with Double Fine and Grasshopper, with Suda51 and, and Tim Schafer, like, I love the ideas, and I, I just don't always get really into the games themselves. Mm -hmm. um, like, I love the idea of Brutal Legend so much, and that... that turned out to be not something I was mm -hmm. into. I mean, I, it was, there's a lot of stuff out there that I want to like more than I actually like, but uh, yeah. you can't really go too wrong with Bethesda, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you're patient for some bugs. I like Gearbox, too. They, they've got some hit or miss ones, you know. I, I'm not gonna say everything they do is good after Duke Nukem, but uh, I like a lot that. of their stuff. I, and I think that they've, they've got the humor down, you know? Like, they're one of those companies that does not take themselves too seriously, which is something that I always appreciate. Well, uh... Do you, you want to answer any more questions? Why don't we just don't cut know. it short for today? It's, it's short. been a long one. I'm really hot in the sweater. I don't know why I wore this. Before we go, in case you guys have not heard, we started this new segment with Anthony Carboni yeah. every Friday called Casual Fridays, where we sit around drinking beer and bullshit about video games, and sometimes I wear funny hats. Yeah. Last week, we talked about our gaming pet peeves, and uh, this week, Max was not there for dental hygiene reasons. So instead, we got Phil Fish, the creator of Fez, to come on and talk about why we all hate the term gamer. This is uh, usually one of the most fun things that we can do while still technically working, and we'd really appreciate it if you guys checked it out and let us know what you thought. You can watch it at youtube.com slash rev3games, which is a new channel we're gonna be talking about more in the coming weeks. Just rest assured it's gonna be awesome. But in the meantime, subscribe, watch, leave comments, preferably ones of the non-asinine variety, and we'll all just, we'll have a great time oh, oh, together. Oh, I have a raccoon fact. Okay. I have a raccoon you fact. May, you were allowed <clears throat> one raccoon fact One per raccoon episode. fact before we go. Raccoon fact, I previewed Sly Cooper Thieves in Time and interviewed the president of Sanzaro Games about whether or not raccoons can actually time travel and steal things. And that's, that's on our channel right here. That's up right now. You should go check that out. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Max Scoville. She's at Tara Longest. Uh, and between the two of us, we are at Detoid Show. Mm. And, you know, between the Mass Effect 3 review going up uh, on Monday night at midnight and uh, GDC happening all of next week and us working all weekend, uh, Twitter is going to be a great way to sort of track our increasing exhaustion yeah. and subsequent descent into madness. 
Uh, I may die next week. I yeah. may literally die, and then I'll never be able to tweet again. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, you guys have a have a great weekend. I'm gonna go hang myself from a weather balloon and try and have sex with a krogan. Good night.